Okay, pedi pedigrees, four modes of inheritance. This one is six sex-linked recessive. So we know that this particular trait or disorder, whatever question is coming up here, is going to be uh, found on the sex X chromosome. Okay, so let's get right to the question. It says here, hemophilia is a sex-linked recessive disorder. Now again, we're going to take a look at some of the evidence that we gave in the notes and just make sure that this aligns with this pedigree that we have here. So uh, not all this evidence is always 100%. I will tell you when it's 100% must be this or it can't be that mode. Some of them are don't always work. Let's just put it that way. So let's take a look at this one. It says sex-linked recessive. One of the pieces of evidence was that it often skips generation, but uh, we see in this particular case that it doesn't. Okay, so you might think, well, how? If it doesn't skip, why would I not think that this is dominant? Uh, this is the big giveaway right here. The next point is affects overwhelmingly males. So it's not just some of the males or most of the males. It's like overwhelmingly males that it's going to affect. And if you take a look at this pedigree here, you can see really quickly that uh, it is all males. So that is a dead giveaway that this is sex-linked recessive, okay? Sex-linked recessive. Uh, the reason mostly males, again, if you're interested in knowing is because males only have one X sex chromosome, the other one being a Y sex chromosome. So if they have the mutation on that one X, they don't have the benefit of having a normal X to mask the expression of it. So if they have one X and they have the mutation, they have the disorder of the trait. Okay, so what's missing out of here is just, I don't know why, when I transferred it, let's just put a couple of Roman numerals to show the different generations and then the individuals. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Okay, so that's how we determine these individuals. Now, because it's sex linked, we must have X's and Y's in our pedigree. I know if I have a normal X, and I think we've given the nomenclature or the notation here, X is normal, X with the superscript H is hemophilia. So if I have just an X, I don't care what that is, it could be another X, it could be a Y uh, with the hemophilia if it's another X, and that will always be normal. So a legend is just as important for these pedigrees as it was for problem solving. Uh, if I have a hemophiliac female, because it's recessive hemophilia, blood disorder where it'll cause somebody to bleed to death because they're unable to clot their blood, to have a hemophiliac female, I must have both my XX chromosomes with that mutation. So that is a hemo, just abbreviate female. And to have a hemo male, because he only has one X, if that has the mutation, the other one being the Y, he's going to be a hemo male. Okay, there's our legend. Okay, still very important, the legend. So if we take a look at these individuals, anybody that is shaded in uh, has the disorder. And if it's a square, we know it's going to be a male. So we can fill some of these in pretty quick. A little h and y. Now, this female is x. What's her other one? Well, let's take a look at her offspring. Now, it's only females that can contribute, in this case, the hemophiliac allele to the boys. Because what dad is contributing to determine if that's going to the boy, he's determining, or he's donating the Y to these boys. So where did that hemophilia mutation come from? Well, it had to come from mom. Because it's only mums that will infect the boys. The boys are getting the Y from dad, so he's not giving them the mutation. Okay, so now we know that this mum, individuals one, two, must be heterozygous, and it's known as being a carrier. She's a carrier. She doesn't have the disease, but she does carry the recessive mutated allele for hemophilia. Okay, because it's recessive. So that means these boys, of course, mom gave them all of these mutated X sex chromosomes, and it all came from mum. Okay, uh, now if we're going to take a look at some of these other ones, I know we don't have to show all of these here, 
but uh, let's put a couple of them in there anyways. Uh, all these females we know are just X for now. Now, what does dad give those females? All the females up in this generation here, generation two. Well, he doesn't give them a Y because he gives the Y to his boys, his sons. So what he's giving, and because he's infected, or he has the mutation and he's, uh, he suffers from hemophilia, he must be giving all these females the XX chromosome with the mutation on it. So now we know that all these females must be heterozygous. So you see how we're moving along here. Now, if we take a look at this individual's two, one, we say, well, what is that other allele? We'll take a look at her son. So sometimes you're looking on top, sometimes you're looking at the bottom at offspring. These boys all have the disorder. Where did they get that mutated X sex chromosome? They must have got it from this mom here. Because again, dad is only giving them the Y's here, right? Okay, and these females must be, same thing, heterozygous. They're normal, so they must have at least the X normal allele here for not having hemophilia, but they're all carriers. Why? Because look at dad. Dad gives the female her other X. So I think for sex link disorder, this particular pedigree, we filled in all these blocks. I won't transfer them on there because you'll see that just on the actual pedigree itself. Okay, any questions? Maybe a bit confusing. If you want me to go over it another way or again, uh, just give me an email. Thanks.